Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, and this is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Today we're going to talk about these AirPods Max. So let's get started first talking about talking generally about the build and the features of these things. Now, this is an expensive headphone. I know. Everybody tells me, oh, $550 is a crazy price. It's crazy town. I, I, whatever. These aren't for everybody. These are a very specific headphone. They are for Apple users pretty much only. Like if you have an Android phone, if you have a PC, if you don't do the Apple, then it would be stupid to buy these because you'd be missing out on the features that go along with what they do uh, that integrate with the Apple ecosystem and make it cool. We've got aluminum, we've got stainless steel, we've got uh, a nice soft silicone. This is not the kind of silicone that like grabs your your hair or anything like that. It's very soft. Um, and then we've got ear cups here that are magnetized and slip in and out. I believe that there are going to be uh, replacement ear cups available, and I'm sure that Apple wants them to be like you know the Apple Watch bands. They all have all kinds of special special ones. There are a few little Easter eggs here. This looks exactly like the app arrangement on the Apple Watch. And speaking of the Apple Watch, up here we have all of the little Apple Watch controls. We've got the digital crown and this on the on and on the AirPods Max, this controls stop start, uh, volume as well as skip forward, skip back. And then this button here is what you use to go from transparency mode to noise canceling it back and forth, etc., etc. I caught myself walking around the house the other day with transparency mode on and not realizing that I still had the headphones on. The transparency mode is, is really, really good. Uh, I just, I wasn't playing anything through them. I was just walking around. I was even watching TV with these on. Some people say that they're a little heavy. Uh, I, I don't think that that's really the case. They, they have weight to them, but they're not heavy. I've worn them for hours upon hours upon hours and never felt like uh, any kind of hot spots on my head or anything like that. They are heavy, but they are not uncomfortably heavy, if that makes any sense. We have Apple-specific features that I think are really important to uh, consider here when you're thinking about whether or not these might be worth the money that you're paying for them. Not only do we have the noise canceling and the transparency mode, we also have um, pretty much instant pairing. When you open these up for the first time and your, your iPhone will be like, hey, <laughs> there they are. Uh, you do have to update all of your devices that you want to use these with to use them effectively. The iPad, the Macs, the iPhone, I had to update all of those to get these to pass off effectively between them. And so that's another thing. Handoff is a, is a feature now that these things have. Basically, you can go from one device to another device to another device and back to the original device. And these things will, will pretty much just recognize where you are and what you're doing. You know, they also have an adaptive EQ feature. They have spatial audio feature for video. It's recommended episode two of season two, the first five minutes of The Mandalorian as a great place that you could hear that. And I agree, I checked it out and it sounded really good. So if you're a fan of The Mandalorian, you can check that out. So there's a lot that as an Apple user, you get with these that you would not get with another set of Bluetooth headphones. Now we get to what really matters, the sound. The sound is what really matters. My take is this. I listened to these first for an hour or so just by themselves, just to kind of get a sense of the sound signature. They immediately sounded good. And then I put them down for a while, and then I got into comparing them with the Sony WH-1000XM4s, yes. And then also the, the Beats, Studio Wireless, and then this is a little bit of a wild card, and then the Soundcore Q30s. Uh, these are a little bit of, a, of an unknown entity that I hope gets more well known because these cost $80. They have active noise cancellation. Uh, the sound signature of them is very good for what they are, and uh, they have 60 hours of battery life. 
<laughs> I don't know how they do it. They sound really good for that price. They sound really good, but for that price, it's almost ridiculous. Really, in all the things that I've been seeing out there on the YouTubes, it's the Sony WH-1000XM4s and the Bose 700s against these. So what did I find when I started to do that comparison? How can I describe the way these sound? They sound very tight, very clean, and appropriate to the music that's been playing inside them. So if you're listening to something more modern that has a lot of bass, uh, the bass is there. It's not overwhelming. If you're somebody who likes to press the extra bass button on your headphones, these won't be for you because they don't do the extra bass. The low end was very tight and filled out the, the headset in a nice way, but it didn't overlap with the mid-range. From 2,500 kilohertz to about uh, three or 4,000 kilohertz, that's where the mid-range lives, that's where guitars live, that's where a lot of the main instruments that you're hearing in, say, in just a popular record occur. And a lot of times, the mid-range is either pushed too far forward and it gives everything kind of a wonky, honky sound, or it's recessed to the point where the bass and the high end are sort of eating up its space. Uh, over 4,000 kilohertz, up to say six or 8,000, that's where the vocals live. The vocals were just really precise, really sounding. I, it was a really nice, well-balanced, sound. So I figured out what I thought I was hearing with these before I picked up these. Now, I've had the XM1s, the XM3s, now the XM4s, and these are a very good headphone. They're $350 regular retail price. Uh, you can always get them below $300. I'll put links to all the stuff I'm talking about here, all of these headphones, down in the description below. So head down there if you want to check any of these out. But these are probably on sale right now at holiday time. I'd always thought the sound was pretty good uh, for a noise-canceling headphone. Noise-canceling often affects the overall sound of what you're listening to. Once you get used to it, you don't really notice it, but it, but it does. But when I went from these with noise canceling on to these with noise canceling on, I was very surprised, shocked, I guess is, is a better word. These sounded awful <laughs> compared to these. All of the things that I just said were good about the AirPods Max uh, were, were not good about the Sonys. The low end wasn't really there in the same way that, the, that it is with the AirPods Max. The frequency separations that I talked about, the low, the mid, the high. Uh, the low was kind of pushing up into the mid-range. The high was kind of crunching into the mid-range. Everything felt a little dull and yet a little shrill. And I did this test, you know, taking a break, coming back. I did this test like three times to make sure that I was hearing what I was hearing. And the fact of the matter is, these AirPods Max destroy these sound wise other people are going to say other things other people i don't know what they're hearing because i've been doing this for a long time i pride myself on being able to d describe in the best way possible what i'm hearing in a headset these crisp clear super wide sound stage everything felt like it had the appropriate amount of space around it and then these were just really congested, really closed, and the soundstage was very narrow by comparison. I would say these are a headphone that would be best for the noise canceling. Comparing the noise canceling of the two, this might be slightly better, but it's really close. The noise canceling on these is really, really good. And then one thing that I appreciate about these that isn't the case with these or, or most other uh, noise canceling headphones that I've tried is when you go from noise canceling to transparency mode to off to noise canceling, the sound of what you're listening to doesn't significantly change. When you go between noise canceling and other stuff with these, the sound signature changes quite significantly from one thing to the next. People want to know, are the Apple AirPods Max worth $549? I guess worth that is in the eye of the beholder. Some people might never ever consider spending $550 on a pair of headphones. For somebody who really appreciates headphones like myself, I was blown away by these. These stomp everything else on my table. 
these are the best noise canceling headphones that I've heard. Period. And with the value added by the Apple friendly uh, stuff from the ecosystem, as well as the build quality of these, they feel like a premium headphone as close as you can get for this kind of money. Uh, so these are these are a win. These are a major, 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 major go if I were to speak in philosophy Carter parlance. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. We'll have a boisterous discussion, I'm sure, because uh, these are not the best. Sorry, these are the best. We'll talk down in the comments below. I really appreciate you being here. If you like what you see here, if you wanna get more uh, audio related stuff, Apple and Samsung and smartphone related stuff, then hit that subscribe button, bell notify yourself so you know when another Painfully Honest Tech video is coming out. Follow me on Twitter at Jason T. Lewis, PhD, and uh, that's where I hang out when I'm not hanging out on YouTube. Look for Painfully Honest Tech podcast live streams coming every Tuesday, or subscribe to the podcast on your podcast app of choice. Once again, my name's Jason. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech. So honest it hurts. <laughs> Until the next time, I'm out.